Hi everybody, it's Lori from Not Forgotten Farm and I am going to talk to you a little bit about stitching on Osnaberg that I mentioned the other day um, up on my blog and on Instagram and Facebook. I haven't been on any kind of video for quite a while. Um, close friends of mine know that um, mom has been you know, up in hospice and uh, I've been traveling back and forth to Connecticut from Virginia. It's kind of rough. Um, she is stable, but she's still in hospice. So we want to just thank you all for your continued um, good wishes and thoughts of healing for everybody, especially for, you know, mom and, you know, just our family in general. Um, I try to keep myself busy doing a lot of stuff and I find myself sometimes just wearing out. I want to do everything and I want to get everything done and I want everything to be perfect and I've come to the conclusion that it's not going to happen. So instead of trying to force myself to produce monumental amounts of things like I used to in the past, I've decided to slow down a little bit. Um, not saying that, you know, I'm still not doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm being more judicious about the things that I'm doing. I'm really stitching from my heart. Um, and I think by passing that on along to you guys who like to stitch my things, you're going to see a little bit of a change, um, for me getting more back to the roots of, um, what I used to do as far as the designing and whatnot. I mean, I know that I do a lot of, you know, folky and whimsical, whimsical kind of stuff. Um, and I will continue to do that, of course, but I love to just do plain, simple, primitive work. Um, again, this is supposed to be a video on how I'm stitching on Osnaberg. Um, if there are some of you out there that are not familiar with Osnaberg cloth, it's a cotton cloth that is a very forgiving, easy to see for me with these and my magnifier and a good light, of course. It comes out to be about a 36 37 count uneven weave fabric. Um, it replicates the look of the linen that I love, but it's just, when it's in my hoop, I can stretch it open more and I can see the little holes better. Uh, I've been stitching on Osnaberg for a handful of 10 years, somewhere around there. Um, what is Osnaberg? So I buy it off the bolt. Uh, no, I don't. I buy it by the bolt. Um, this is 100% cotton. It is a 44, 45 inch wide. And it's a natural. This is the natural uh, color of it. Of course, I overstain it with my walnut stain or my coffee. or I make stain out of spices like allspice and star anise and cinnamon and cloves. I'll even add that to coffee stain or I'll add that to the walnut stain and whatnot. I mean, if it's going to stain, I'm going to use it aside from, you know, throwing some mud up on there. But hmm. anyway, um, what I do is I cut it by the yard and then I cut it into quarter yards and then I will stain it in a big pot and let it sit and then I just hang it on the line and I let it dry. Sometimes you can find the Osnaberg with these little flecks of, um, they look like seeds from the cotton, which I would imagine it is. And I don't wanna hear anybody talk about how I pronounce the word cot cotton, cotton. My girlfriends razz me about that all the time. I say cotton. I'm a Yankee from Connecticut living in the South and it's just how I say it. Cotton, cotton, cotton. Anyway, yeah, so there's some cotton seeds in there, but sometimes you can get it that doesn't have too many cotton seeds in it. Uh, this is an old piece that I did, design that I did. Um, my needle is sharp, it's called, and I did it on an Osnaberg. 
and there's not that many cotton seeds in it, but it's awesome. It's very primitive, very soft. And of course, I've filled this with sawdust too. I've got all kinds of hangy things on here so that I can tie my scissors on here or just make it look pretty when I wrap it around. So that's one of the first ones that I've done on Osnaburg uh, quite a while ago. I did another one called uh, Give Bees a Chance, and that's on Osnaburg, and I did stain it um, after I stitched it. So yeah, I stain it before I stitch it, I stitch it, and then I stain it after I stitch it. Being careful not to overstain the lighter colored threads um, so that they don't disappear into the actual ground fabric that much. But I love that look too, so I'm just all over the place. I'm a mess. But yeah, this is Give Bees a Chance, and again, it's on Osnaburg. And a nice little frame that I sponge painted. Okay, this is another one called Heart's Ease that I did. I love the shape of this heart, and I'm thinking I may want to do, I know I just came out with new Christmas ones and winter ones, which I'll show you in a second, but I just love the shape of this, and I think this would be such a pretty Christmas tree ornament. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that, I think. So yeah, this is Heart's Ease. And again, on Osnaburg, a little bit more cotton flecking in there, if you want to call it that, seeds, whatever. All right, on to the new ones. Uh, these are the ones that I shared with you on Instagram and up on the blog and on Facebook. This one is Xmas Squirrels. Of course, Xmas being short for Christmas, but because we do cross stitch and the X looks like the stitch we make, I figured I'd call it x Mass Squirrels. Um, I showed on my blog the tutorial for how to, uh, how I stuff my things with the sawdust that my husband, that Peter, you know, so generously throws my way. Um, I love that, I love it. The sawdust is, it's full, but it's light. It's like, wee, it's very light, um, but it packs well. And I, I love it. Yeah. So this is Xmas squirrels. And of course I had to do a little white squirrel because being from Connecticut, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the white squirrels down in my Instagram feed, but they're everywhere or on my blog. Uh, Connecticut, especially my hometown, Stratford, Connecticut, is overrun with little white squirrels. And we love them and we feed them and they're friendly and they're just the sweetest as can be. So here's what the back looks like. I put my little patch on there. And if you go to the blog, uh, farmhousenotforgotten.blogspot.com, you'll see the uh, pictorial that I put up of how I made these. Okay, so the next one is Holly Jolly. That's him. I thought he came out really cute. Um, he's not difficult. I really stained this one. This one's a little bit more stained than the other two new ones. Um, he's nice and stuffed. You make sure that when you're stuffing the corners, you use a, um, a wooden chopstick or a wooden dowel, but just don't poke through. Be very careful. And again, I did the back. Uh, I use the same fabrics on the back of these three because they're DMC threads. And of course my color palette never changes. Um, so whatever threads I'm using, whether it's DMC, Gentle Art, Week Dye Works, um, Color and Cotton, I mean, Valdani, uh, my color palette never, ever, ever changes. I just adapt my, my hues to whatever their color is that they provide. Um, these are also stitched one strand of floss over the two threads of the Osnaburg fabric. So yeah, that's Holly Jolly. And then this is Cinder Claus, or Cinder Claus, depending on where you're from. Uh, being Pennsylvania German, Cinder Claus was someone that my mom always told us about. Uh, just a fun little guy, kind of more of an elf than a Santa, but um, I figured I'd memorialize him 
and cross stitched and I love him tucked down in the little pointy toe stocking that I do. Um, he's tiny. Like I, I had put the measurements up and, um, Peter came to me and he's like, that's not right. And I said, what's not right? And he said, I don't think you measured that correctly. And I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure I did. So I measured it and I was right. It is the size that I said it is on the pattern packet. So Cinder Klaus, I love him. He's cute as could be. And again, the back. So that's that. I am going to use the rest of today to cut this and dye it and uh, hang it on the line to dry because it's a nice sunny day. Although it is October 27th, it's like 80 degrees out, I think. Yep, 80, 82 degrees out. Yay. Mm -mm. I want it to be cold if it's going to be October, but then again, you know, being a kid up north and growing up up north, October's are for, late October's are for crunchy leaves, cold breezes, apple spice, pumpkin pie, everything. So there should not be any ladybugs flying around like there are right now here in good old Virginia. Um, next week we're supposed to have a little bit colder weather, so hopefully they will just, you know, go bye-bye all of these little bugs that want to stay out. And yeah. So anyway, I'm hoping, and I say it all the time, that maybe I'll get a couple more videos out. Oh, I did want to say one, one more thing, and this isn't cross-stitch related. This is punch needle related. I put up um, that beginning in January of 2024. I'm going to be offering um, a little bit, well, beginning beginners to intermediate uh, punch needle classes. And I am delving into Zoom classes. So that may take me a little bit because I'm not super tech savvy and I don't even know if I'm good, this thing's going to work here today, but we'll find out. Um, I know that some of you have contacted me and had me put you on a waiting list for the... Uh, beginner to advanced, no, beginner to intermediate punch needle um, classes coming up. So I've got you down, I've got you. Uh, I'll send out reminders, but I'll also be, you know, posting about that a little bit more closer, closer to the first of the year after the holidays and all are over with. So I guess that's it. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. And thank you again for keeping my family in your thoughts. And as always, your kind support keeps us going and um, your friendships fill our hearts and we're blessed. So we'll see you again soon.